Welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing Mono Green Tron, and uh, this time we are in a mirror match. So, let's get underway. This is our opening hand, and um, it's not great, to be quite honest. Um, far too many forests, only one Tron piece. We do have the Expedition map, um, but I don't like this. I think we're going to mulligan this away. Um, this isn't a whole lot better, to be honest. Um, I suppose we got Power Plant into Chromatic Star into hopefully a Sylvan Scrying. Um, so I think we run with this rather than go to 5, but potentially, arguably, it might be worth going to 5. Um, but there we go. Um, I think we've seen Ancient Stirrings on the top there from the Scry. So. Uh, not the worst. We're on the player. I'm just going to lead with power plant into expedition map. We're going to crack this star. Hope to draw a land, but it uh, turns out we don't. Um, so we're going to ancient stirrings. Uh, and unfortunately, we only find Sanctum of Ugin um, and no Tron piece. So a pretty rough start for us. Punt has a second Tron piece, so he's going to have turn three Tron. So things are already looking pretty bad for us at this point. Uh, we also don't have any green mana to uh, use these scryings or these uh, ancient stirrings. It's going to run out of oblivion stone. My opponent is going to put together Tron. Khan comes down, gets rid of one of our Urza's mines. Uh, we draw a walking ballista, so no for, uh, additional land. Opponent just gets rid of our other land. And then drops a world breaker to leave us with no lands. Um, and yeah, we are well and truly beat here, so uh, that's the concession. Um, yeah, our, our starting hand was kind of shaky to begin with, uh, and unfortunately, it only got worse as we sort of failed to drop iron land drops. Meanwhile, our opponent had turn three Khan, um, and everything worked out pretty nicely. So uh, yeah, didn't end particularly well for us. So let's go into sideboarding. Okay, so here we have sideboarding uh, in the mirror match. Um, I mean, the mirror match really is all about who sticks Tron first and who lands the first Haymaker. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't think there's a ton of stuff to bring in. Uh, we definitely want the nature's claims, uh, obviously, as a way of blowing up their artifacts, um, which is obviously pretty good. In general, we can get rid of expedition maps, potentially, or... Uh, or the uh, chromatic spheres, chromatic stars, um, and various other cards, um, uh, and worm coil engines, walking ballistas, etc. So it's obviously a good card to bring in. Um, I don't think we want thought not seers necessarily. Um, I think we're probably best just pushing to go over the top. Um, then uh, Thrag Tusk. It's uh, well. I mean, we not, the life gain is not really important, so I don't think that's any really any use for us. Um, I suppose potentially thought not. See, is decent. Uh, obviously, if you don't get Tron, then uh, you can cast that fairly easily, um, and you can also potentially disrupt your opponent's hand. But it's perhaps a little bit slow. Um, Relic doesn't do anything. Needle is potentially good, but we've, they've basically got the same cards that we've got, so I don't think that works out particularly well. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, primarily the nature's claims, you might want to consider bringing Thought Not Seeds, I suppose. In terms of cards that want to come out, um, Dismembers don't do anything, so you definitely want to bring those out. Um, and Ugin is also uh, not particularly exciting. Um, obviously because they have a bunch of colourless spells as well um, and just lightning bolting them is uh, kind of a slow way to kill opponent so I suppose e Ugin's and Dismembers out, uh, all your nature's claims in and I guess we could bring in a Needle or maybe another Relic just as a cycler um, so uh, yeah I think that's that's about it for the mirror match Okay, so here we are with uh, game two. Uh, uh, 
a slightly awkward hand. Um, obviously, we've got two Tron pieces and a way to find the third, um, but we don't have anything to do early on. There's no chromatic star or sphere to uh, to make this work, uh, which could be a problem. Um, but I think there's a good chance that we draw into a forest or a chromatic sphere or star. Um, so I don't think we can really mulligan this. So I'm just gonna leave off with those as mine. Fun plays power plant into expedition map, which is a little bit scary. Uh, we draw into Urza's tower, um, which obviously was the other option. Um, and uh, yeah, we just uh, we're just gonna naturally tron here. That looks the things. Um, so opponent plays in Urza's mind, so he is also looking to do turn three tron. But as it turns out, we're gonna be able to get the uh, turn three Khan, which is very nice. Uh, Gonna exile the mine here, no particular reason. Um, we could have exiled the uh, power plant instead. Um, obviously, it's kind of annoying if our opponent does have another uh, another copy of that land in their hand, just randomly, but generally that works out pretty well. Um, so yeah, our opponent searches up another as his mine, obviously because that's now the card that he has the least copies of. Um, so it's always best if someone is going to destroy one of your Tron lands and you have the ability to search in response like with the expedition map Always search up the card they, uh, they destroyed because you have fewer copies of that card in your deck compared to the other ones So obviously in this case our opponent has four Urza's Towers and uh, only three Urza's Mines left So he should search up the Urza's Mine There's another expedition map and a chromatic sphere. We draw into a forest. Um, so, got some options here. So, I mean, we, we've got a number of options here. We can exile a second land with Khan, which will probably be pretty good. Um, obviously, sees our opponent off Tron um, and uh, makes their life quite difficult. Um, we obviously kept in one Ugin or some number of Ugins, um, potentially maybe just one. Um, I don't, like I say, I don't, I don't think it's a very good card in this matchup, so I don't really like it, but um, obviously I uh, I did keep one, at least one copy in. Um, so yeah, I we've got several options. We're going to exile another Tron piece. We can nature's claim the expedition map and therefore our opponent, unless they get lucky, uh, won't have Tron next turn. Um, and uh, then we can just tick up the Khan instead and keep our Khan abound. Um, so I think that's what I end up doing. I'm not sure if it's actually the right play. I think in hindsight, maybe we should have um, just uh, exiled another land from our opponent. Because there's still a chance that our opponent just draws uh, the Eldrazi, ta uh, the Urza's Tower, uh, which I think he actually does. Yeah, so uh, that's the reason not to do play it that way. Um, so yeah, I think I think I think we probably should have just doubled down on the Khan. Um, we could have joined, and then we could have blown up the expedition map as well, I suppose, um, just to make our opponent's life extra difficult. Uh, fortunately, our opponent doesn't have any sort of haymaker play. Um, there's no Khan or anything coming down, so uh, we are uh, just facing off a walking ballista, which is absolutely fine. Um, so I'm going to play Sanctum of Ugin here. I'm going to be able to play Ugin and then sack Ugin to uh, find Ulamog. Which obviously is going to be pretty devastating given our opponent's only got four uh, permanents on the battlefield as it stands. Uh, also Ugin can uh, plus two and kill this walking ballista. Uh, and then we can also plus four Arkhan. Um, so that puts us in a pretty dominating position. And uh, yeah, that wraps things up. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of a scare there with the uh, Urza's Tower. Um, and uh, yeah, it probably would have been the right place just to exile the uh, the second land there uh, and just let it can't die. Um, but there you go, it works out for us here. Okay, so here we are, game three. Um, this hand is okay. Um, yeah, it's not the best. Uh, we've got a power plant, uh, and we've got a couple of. Uh, Chromatics to uh, to get a little bit deeper. Um, I suppose if we're forced to, we can play a turn uh, a 
walking ballista, a small walking ballista, uh, but that doesn't seem great. Um, so yeah, I keep this hand, but I think in hindsight, we pr it's probably just a mulligan. Um, I mean, it's obviously playable, but it's not likely to get Tron online very quickly. Um, we draw into Urza's Tower, which is obviously a big help. Um, and then we can uh, lead off with a Chromatic Star here. Um, opponent uh, cracks a Chromatic Sphere into a Nature's Claim on the Chromatic Star, which is actually pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> So Chromatic Star draws you a card when it hits the graveyard uh, as opposed to Chromatic Sphere which only draws you a card when you use its ability um, which is why Chromatic Star is like a, a big part of like eggs and things and uh, KCI um, because you still draw the card when you sack it. So uh, yeah, um, there's probably like an argument for uh, the way you sequence them. Uh, I do tend, if I can't immediately crack the Chromatic Star then I will prefer to play a Chromatic Star over a Chromatic Sphere for that reason, because if our opponent does end up blowing it up, then we will draw a card. Um, so that's the way I try and sequence them. I, I mean, it's kind of a fairly minimal thing um, in general. Uh, not likely to come up a bunch, but there you go. Certainly was much better to have the Chromatic Sphere in that uh, situation rather than the... the uh, I mean the star there rather than the sphere. Um, here I'm going to run out uh, an expedition map and a chromatic star and pass the turn. So it actually look like we're going to get Tron online. Our opponent missed their third land drop uh, which is pretty bad for them uh, particularly as we are looking to put on Tron to get the next turn. Um, so that puts them pretty far behind. Um, particularly when it's, they don't even have two Tron pieces as it stands. Um, so we fetch up the final Tron piece, play a walking ballista um, for one, um, and then our opponent presumably doesn't find his third land and uh, concedes. Uh, obviously our follow-up player probably would have been Khan, exile one of their lands, and that would have probably made their life uh, too difficult, and uh, that would have been it. So yeah, kind of a funny matchup, I suppose. It's basically just a sort of a race to hit the first haymaker. Uh, the person who puts Tron together first is most likely to win, um, unless they are light on threats, basically, or they don't have an exciting threat. Um, because, um, I mean, basically our cards are very good against each other. Um, if you stick the first Khan, I think you're very likely to win. Uh, basically just because you can disrupt their uh, their Tron uh, and then from there on out it's going to be very difficult for them to uh, to respond uh, adequately. So it's yeah it's kind of a coin toss to be honest. I don't, I don't think there's too many um, tricks really to be played in this uh, in this matchup. Um, it's really kind of about who can put Tron together fastest. So certainly I think I. I probably one of my weaknesses I probably need to mulligan a bit harder um, to uh, make sure that you've got the best uh, possible chance of putting Tron together because that's really what this match is all about um, so uh, maybe we wouldn't have kept this hand uh, if, uh, if the opening hand that we had here had we been thinking in that mindset uh, fortunately it worked out as our opponent uh, just struggled really badly um, but yeah, it was kind of a risk, and uh, I suppose really what you want to be looking to do is to mulligan into the best possible hand, or the hand with the best possible chance uh, of getting Tron together as fast as possible.